Pat. I'm from the United States. Um, I now live in Singapore. Um, this is my wife, Antonia, so I'm a husband. We have a son together, so I'm also a father. Uh, I sit in a wheelchair, so I'm a wheelchair user. And I'm also an author. Oh, hi, everybody. I'm Antonia. Uh, as you can see, I am his girlfriend most of the time, prefer to be his girlfriend. And uh, sometimes wife. Sometimes wife, yes. <laughs> can you tell me how does it feel not to have any feelings from your chest all the way down to your toes? Um, so I want to um, talk a little bit about my, my injury because I look completely normal. And, um, but in fact, I cannot move from my chest down and I don't have any sensations. What does that mean? Um, it will take a lot to explain. So I thought I would just um, talk about something that's very personal, but also quite funny. Um, uh, and I brought a, a prop. So um, wheelchair, being in a wheelchair is not just about being in a wheelchair. I actually cannot go to the bathroom very easily, as you can see, because uh, well, I'm in a wheelchair. Um, it's not just about the accessibility, the ramps, or a, uh, a bathroom that's spacious. Um, I actually need help. Um, what kind of help? Um, and this is something that most guys won't talk about because they feel really embarrassed. So I thought I would use this to give people who do not have a, this kind of disability to know what we go through. So I actually wear a condom about eight hours a day. Now, guys, that feels really <laughs> great, right? And who gets to uh, wear a condom eight hours a day? <laughs> but I wear it for a very special reason, and I want to show you what this is. So this is a, the condom that I wear. There you can tell it's quite large, and uh, it actually has a hole in the front. Um, so when I wear the condom, I can pee anywhere. And uh, and this is a big plus. You don't have to find a public bathroom. But also, it's um, for guys in wheelchairs, It's uh, they feel embarrassed by this. So I, I want to take this opportunity to tell uh, you know, everyone, uh, don't be embarrassed. This is a part of you, a part of me. Don't be embarrassed by wearing a condom eight hours a day. In fact, you should be really proud of that. You can ask my wife. <laughs> yes, yes, it's uh, less messy. Yes. Yeah. In so many ways. So can you share with us what is a day in your life like? Preferably love life. A special day maybe. Like my wedding day or uh, when we first met. Um, my days are, you know, pretty typical. I wake up at a, a set time and then I need assistance to get up in the morning. Uh, do my stretching exercises. And this is probably something that um, people who don't have uh, family members or friends were in wheelchairs, so I'll, I'll go into a little bit of um, uh, details. Um, again, for someone with my disability, which is a spinal cord injury, I, I don't have control from my chest down and I uh, don't have any sensation. So to get dressed, um, I actually need help. I button my shirt or zip up my pants. And um, this used to bother me a lot. I don't, I didn't feel independent, I didn't feel powerful because um, I needed help with very basic um, routines. And uh, I, I brought a prop to show also. So when I do my work on a computer or when I'm writing, I wear a splint and this is a writing splint and I put it on my hand. So when I write, since I cannot grip the pen very well, um, I use this device. And when I type on a computer, I have two of them, so I can type. Not as quickly as um, able-bodied people, but fast enough. So that's, um, so I go through my day with the assistance of my, you know, my wheelchair, my devices, and I have a, an assistant, and also, of course, my, my wife. And um, it took a while for me to accept um, that as normal, because I, I always wanted to be normal. Um, capable, uh, able-bodied, and um, and I, when I met Antonia, she would see me in my office and like suddenly becoming angry, 
and uh, and it would be like I dropped my pen on the floor, and uh, I since I I couldn't pick it up myself, I needed to wait. But then I would start feeling, why do I have everything, but I cannot pick up my pen? Uh, so so I was really angry for. So my typical day actually would involve bouts of uh, anger, and um, and that's how I lived for a long time, uh, until actually I, I met Antonia, and everything changed after that. Wow, that's how powerful. <laughs> so my everyday has evolved a lot over the last few years. Well, I guess when I met him, he was literally cursing and swearing by himself in the office, um, and in front of everybody. He's always. The jovial, really positive person, and then I was thinking, like, oh my goodness, is this a hypocrite? <laughs> like, what's going on? And then, okay, I recognize that um, it was, he has his frustration because of all the simple little things, like uh, picking up uh, a paper that he just printed from the printer. He needs help. Um, he can't get it uh, immediately as well, and uh, when. For example, when he calls for me and I don't get there, like within three seconds, wow! It's just dark clouds start building, and um, the room will have, you know, will start having thunderstorm. Uh, and and I was very upset initially during the first uh, couple of months uh, being married. And it was later on I started growing uh, and feeling, you know, uh, putting myself in his shoes. Then I recognize that okay, I would be probably a worse person uh, internally as compared to him. And then uh, we started building our environment uh, in a way where he would have his convenience um, uh, from 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 the base basic placement and the height of the table. We would just adjust it for him uh, within our living spaces. Yeah, and he became a kinder person. <laughs> So prior marrying me, did you face any challenges dating? <laughs> I knew this one was coming. And, uh, good thing I wrote a book about this, so uh, oh. she knows everything. Um, one of the things that I I was injured when I was thirteen years old, so I, I wasn't dating back then, but I already had interest in in the, uh, the opposite gender. Um, it was something that really bothered me dating, and it because I, I felt that I wasn't normal, and I was at a disadvantage, and um, but I was also really determined. So I started to to develop myself and and practice and and study how to date, and there was not a whole lot of help, and I did a lot of uh, exploring on my own, and what I found out was. Initially, because of the way that I I felt about myself, I made it more difficult um, because I always thought that the wheelchair would be in a way. So everything, if if the girl doesn't return my call or she wouldn't kiss me, I would focus on the wheelchair. It had to be the wheelchair. Who wouldn't want to kiss this, right? And uh, <laughs> um, and that was my truth for many years. And I, I had successes. I, I dated uh, many wonderful um, uh, women, um, but when things didn't work out, or when things work out initially, I would sabotage my uh, my my life actually, because I felt I was in some ways not worthy of having a relationship. And I would I did a lot of things, maybe not even consciously, so. Dating was challenging, and I, um, when I first met Antonia, I, I didn't think she would become my wife. I mean, I, I thought it was the longest of, uh, you know, it was a, the longest shot, and uh, I went into it with that mentality. But I'm very thankful that she saw something in me, and uh, I. I screwed up so many times, and uh, I even you know, did things like proposing to her over the phone, and she still accepted. So, um, so I just want to 
uh, save this for again for for guys in wheelchairs uh, because I'm I'm uh, one. Uh, the wheelchair usually is not the issue, and you you trust me because um, I first of all I I'm in a wheelchair and I'm just a guy, and I made a ton of mistakes, and I can still be where I am today, uh, sharing my experiences and having a just the most wonderful, amazing person in my life. So you too can have this, but you must not always focus on the wheelchair because it is not the wheelchair. And I want to say this, you know what it is? It is you. And that's a good thing. What are the three words you will use to describe each other? Okay, I will help you start. All right. So, can you look at me for some, so I can some have some inspiration? Okay. Well, loving will be the first one, and I'll go. Um, I will use cheerful. Uh, sexy. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> now I have to. I blush and I let me uh, compose myself. Um, I will use the word wise, and I want to explain a little bit. Um, wise means Antonia knows the true cause of things. Like she would tell me, um, if you want to be really successful, it's not about working your ass off all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, because that was my approach. You know, work hard. If I, since I'm in a wheelchair, I'm at a disadvantage, I'll just put in more hours. She said, it's not about the hours because um, you're not, you know, making, you're not in the factory uh, making parts. Um, your output is not um, something that simple. How about being generous? Maybe that'll help you become more successful. So uh, I, I, um, I didn't think about things in that way. Uh, to me, everything was about numbers. Like I do X, I get Y. I do two X, I get two Y. And then when I met her, she, um, she kind of taught me how do you look at things from a, a different perspective. So I would use the word wise. Okay, and I have oh, the also, final one. Uh, oh, wait, you still have wait, another wait. one? I'll steal this one. Uh, okay. <laughs> she's also uh, incredibly, she has great taste because she married me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll have the final one. Yes, yes. Okay, and uh, I feel that he's a very versatile person. Uh, despite being, uh, you know, in a chair, in a wheelchair, his ability to evolve, to accept change, and, and wanting to embark on a route to improve himself constantly, uh, it's, an, it's an inspiration for me every single day. And, and, and that pushes me to want to be the best, uh, not just for myself, also for, for him and our family. What is your biggest failure and success? My biggest failure? There are actually quite a few. And the one that comes to my mind is my inability to accept myself. And this had to do, again, I, I, go, I go back to the wheelchair because at age 13, I was, I was very young. And I, I was healthy, and I went from healthy, smart, loved, to being in a wheelchair. And I, I, I hated my wheelchair. And I didn't want to see myself as somebody who was disabled. But I, I hid this from everyone. And uh, because everybody said, oh, you got to be strong. You have to fight, you need to succeed, you know. So I, I did what I thought was the right thing. And, um, I, and I fought. I fought from age 13 all the way up for decades. And it was me against my wheelchair. Um, so life actually became um, a battle. And people actually call me 
I, I took it as a compliment, a uh, wheelchair warrior. Um, and I was quite proud of being a warrior. And it was not until I got married, I realized that, do I really want every day to, every day to be a, a battle? Because if you tell yourself you're a warrior, and you're always fighting against your wheelchair, your environment, guys who are not in wheelchairs, then your life becomes really, really tiring. I win all the time. I'm a champion, but I'm always battling. And for me, um, that's actually a, a big failure because you have everything you want. You're winning, yet you feel tired all the time and you cannot be yourself. So I think that was uh, my biggest failure. And my biggest success was actually um, having the great fortune of, of realizing that. Um, I didn't know this until, again, I, I, I feel um, dating helped, even when I you know, flame out or got rejected. Um, because without all the failures, I could not have um, the realization that you know, life is beautiful. Um, I'm actually really grateful for everything that I have, including the wheelchair. And that a wheelchair is a, um, it's not limiting. It's actually, uh, it gave me freedom. It's giving me freedom. Without the wheelchair, I wouldn't be here. I, I mean, I, I'm, unless Antonia would carry me the whole way. <laughs> and she's strong, but not that strong. Um, so it, it changed the way that I look at myself. And, um, but it took all sorts of um, detours and adventures and, uh, and again, uh, lots of failures. Uh, and I wouldn't call them failures, lessons, um, to arrive at that. So um, I feel to, to now accept myself and to see things, uh, to see my life as beautiful and complete, even in a wheelchair, and that is my, my greatest achievement. So we've been together for almost eight years. Can you tell me what is one greatest lesson that uh, you've learned from? Mm. Antonia is uh, not who she seems. You you look at her, and she's uh, <laughs> what would you? How would you describe her? And I I feel that um, beautiful uh, would be my first word because when I first met her, I was like wow. And, um, but then it was when I really got to know her, by the way, I, I pretty much got rejected the first time, the first three <laughs> times. Um, so one of the lessons is don't give up, uh, even after three times, maybe more. Um, but I, I feel that, and what Antonia taught me was don't judge a person by her appearance. And, um, and this, um, yeah, you uh, applies to, uh, uh you know, many, many dates I, I took Antonia because I thought, okay, a woman who looks like that <laughs> must have very extraordinary and uh, expensive taste. <laughs> so I took her to you know, the trendiest, the fanciest places and uh, to impress her. And it was not until a, a lot later, um, one day she, uh, you know, when we were just getting up, she said, hey, let's, let's just go downstairs for... Uh, for some ice cream and then we just roll out of bed and went downstairs for, for ice cream and that's when I realized that hmm maybe she's not all about you know expensive trendy things that's actually it was me it was my own insecurity so um, when you see something that's beautiful or ordinary it doesn't really matter get to know that person get to know that thing and then you will learn a lot. What is the best advice that you have ever received and from who? Best advice? Mm, this is a, a good one. Um, it was not actually directed at me, um, but it was a, a wedding that I attended. So I remember um, at the um, ceremony, 
a um, the pastor took out a box, and then said it was a gift to the bride and the groom. And、um, they opened it, and it was empty inside. So it was a, a surprise.、Uh, is it supposed to be empty? They wouldn't. They were.、Uh, they didn't know what to do. Okay. And、um, and the pastor said, "This is your life. It's empty." So everybody was silent because it sounded really bleak. Your life is empty. And he added this: "Empty, like this box." I was thinking, oh no, what what's、uh, what's happening? It's like a movie. <laughs> and he said, well, your marriage is empty like this box. You know, your life is empty. It is a box. It is whatever you put into it. If you put love, appreciation, acceptance, that's what your life becomes. If you put anger, you put jealousy into the box, that becomes your life. So we actually have the power to shape our lives. If you're not married, it doesn't matter. If you're married, great. But life is what we put into it. So every day when I wake up in the morning, I ask myself: Every day, it's an empty box. Do I want to be joyous? Do I want it to be peaceful? Or do I want to go about rushing around and、uh, you know feeling upset at myself or others? That's my decision. And if you build your life day by day, putting beautiful things in the box, you'll end up with a beautiful life. And、um, I used to do things, and, and Antonio will attest to this.、Um, I like to do things fast, and I like to do things cheap. Now. <laughs> Fast is great, cheap is good.、Mm -hmm. However, if your life is a box, and you put fast and cheap in there, what does your life become? You have fast and cheap. That is not really how I want my life to turn out. So, with that, I I realize beautiful things take time, day by day, year by year. So it is okay to take some time to do things. And how do you make your life amazing? It's actually really simple. Not fast and cheap, by the way.、Um, just do amazing things every single day, and you will, without a doubt, have a amazing life. And that was the advice, not given directly to me, but I really reflect on it very often. What is the greatest virtue you think one should uphold, and what is the reason? The greatest virtue to uphold. So the greatest virtue is,、um, for me, to understand that every single part of our life,、uh, the challenges, the joy, they're all necessary. So it could be a habit. It may not even be a quote good habit. It could be a horrible habit, or it could be a great habit. But as we evolve, we need different skills. We need different habits in our lives. So the virtue is to know and appreciate what you have, the great habits and the not so great habits that you have developed, and to use them. And when it's time to let go, let go of these habits and develop new ones. And that is how you can evolve your life constantly, become a better person, a greater person. So the greatest virtue is to have that understanding and to evolve your life constantly.